I am Alexander Kolobov, and today I am going to talk on high load systems and the challenges they bring. My presentation will be based on my extensive experience in social network development and product management. If you are interested, pass on the seat belts and join the ride. First, let me introduce myself and shed some light on my experience. I worked as a team lead at one of the biggest social networks where I led teams up to 10 members, including sales specialists and analysts and project uh, managers. As a developer, I designed, developed and maintained various features for the desktop and mobile web versions of a social network across backend, frontend and mobile application APIs. I have redesigned the social network interface for multiple user sections, completely rewrote network widgets for external sites, maintained privacy settings for closed profiles and content archiving function, overhauled the backend and frontend for the mail notification system, handling millions of emails daily. And finally, <coughs> I have created a system for conducting NPS and CSI surveys that covered the two largest Russian social networks and some of their standards. Today, I want to touch upon the following aspects of the topic. We'll brief briefly discuss how to define if the system is high load or not. Uh, then we talk about the way high loads change the system requirements. And based on my expertise, I'll highlight what approaches and technologies can help overcome high load challenges. Let's begin with definition. What system can we call high load? A system is considered high load if it meets several criteria. Uh, first of all, high request volume. Uh, the system must help uh, millions of requests daily. Second is a large user base. Uh, support millions of concurrent uh, users. Uh, next is extensive data management. Manage terabytes or even petabytes of data. Performance and scalability maintains responsiveness under increasing loads. Complex operations performs resource-intensive calculations or data processing. High reliability uh, requires 99.9% or high uptime. Uh, geographical distribution serves users across multiple locations with low latency. Concrete processing handles numerous concurrent operations. And finally, load balancing distributes traffic effectively to avoid bottlenecks. Basically, this is what we already can call high load. One more thing I want to mention is that if I were to give a one sentence definition of what high load system is, I would say that high load is it when usual methods for processing requests, storing data and managing infrastructure are no longer enough and there is a need to create custom solutions. Let's take a look at VK social network loads. Here is what the system had to process already a couple of years ago. 100 million users per month, 100 million posts and content creations per day and 9 billion post views per day. The numbers you've seen on the previous slide results in these performance metrics, so we can definitely call VK loads are high. Now that we have defined that our system is high load, we can take a step further and take a look at the difficulties the management of such systems entails. First of all, it's performance or maintaining fast response times and processing under high load conditions. Besides, we need to store, retrieve and process large volumes of data effectively. Then we'll have to provide that scalability is possible at any stage. Ensuring the system remains operational and available despite high traffic and potential failures. And definitely we need to build systems that can recover from failures and continue to operate smoothly. Apart from challenges, uh, high load systems bring certain risks, and that is why we have to question some of the traditional tools. The main issue with external solutions is that they are not highly specialized. Instead, they are designed for broad market applicability, and it often comes at the expense of performance. There is also an issue with security. 
On one hand, external solutions are usually well tested due to their large user base, but on the other hand, fixing identified issues quickly and precisely is challenging. Moreover, updating to a fixed version might lead to compatibility problems. External solutions also require ongoing tweaking and fixing, which is very difficult uh, unless you're a committer of that solution. And finally, they are, may not scale effectively. Naturally, with the growing loads, reliability, data management, scaling requirements are increasing. Uh, for example, in the past, downtime for maintenance was acceptable. Users had lower expectations and fewer alternatives. Today, with the vast availability of online services and the high competition among them, even short periods of downtime can lead to significant user dissatisfaction and negatively affect net promoter score. Uh, quick recovery used to mean a service was never considered down. Today, according to the five nines uh, standard, it means 99.999% uh, of time, which is often referenced in the tech industry. Only about five minutes of downtime per year are considered acceptable. Uh, also, users previously kept backups, but now cloud services must ensure zero data loss. Uh, while systems were once planned in advance, there is now a need for them to scale linearly at any moment due to possible explosive audience growth. And convenience and time to market. In a competitive environment, it's essential to launch features quickly and frequently. Further on, we'll discuss some possible ways on how to overcome these challenges and meet the high load requirements. Here you can see how VK social network grew and gradually transformed its architecture and adapted or created technologies that suited the scale and new requirements. Here is what happened. As long as platform grows, attracted a large audience, uh, numerous bottlenecks appeared and optimizations became necessity. Uh, databases could no longer keep up. Uh, the project code base became too large and too slow. The volume of user-generated content also increased, creating new bottlenecks. In normal size projects, uh, traditional databases like MySQL and PostgreSQL, etc., uh, can meet all your needs. However, in high-load projects, each need often requires a separate data storage solution. As the load increased, it became crucial to switch to custom, highly specialized databases with uh, data storing in simple, fast, low-level level structures. In 2009, when relational databases couldn't be effectively or couldn't effectively handle the growing load, uh, the team started developing their own uh, data storage engines. Uh, this engine functions as microservices with embedded databases written in C or C++. Currently, there are about 800 engine clusters, each responsible for its own logic, such as messages, recommendations, photos, hints, letters, lists, logs, news, etc. For each task needing a specific data structure or unusual queries, the C team creates a new engine. The custom engines proved to be much more efficient. Engines use simple data structures, as I said. In some cases, they store data as nearly bare indexes. Uh, leading to minimal structuring and processing and uh, at, at the reading stage. This approach increased data access and processing speed. We also get more efficient data replication and sharding, reliance on master-slave replication and strict, strict data level sharding, enables horizontal scaling without any issues. Also, all data is heavily cached, often pre-computed and uh, in advance. Uh, caches are sharded with custom wrappers for automatic keys count calculation on code level. 
uh, in large systems like ours, catching moves from merely improving performance as main goal to reducing load on the backend. The next challenge was optimizing the application code itself. It was written in PHP and became too slow, but changing the language was impossible with millions of lines of code in the project. So the goal of KeyPHP compiler is to transform PHP code into C++. Uh, this approach boosts performance without the extensive problems associated with rewriting the entire code base. The team started improving the system from bottlenecks and for them it was the language not the code itself. Finally, in real production environments, KPHP proved to be from 7 to 10 times faster than just simple PHP. KPHP was adopted as a backend of VK. By now, it uh, supports PHP 7 and 8 features, making it compatible with modern PHP standards. KPHP allows fast compilation and efficient development cycles. It enforces strict typing to reduce bugs and improve code quality, and uses shared memory for efficient management. The system supports parallelization and coroutines, so multiple processes can run simultaneously, and optimizes code through inline. It enhances performance on systems with non-uniform memory access. Then, with the no verify linter, the team enhanced code quality and reliability. No verify is designed for large code bases and focuses on analyzing Git divs before they are pushed. It indexes around 1 million lines of code per second and analyzes about 100,000 lines per second. Besides, it can run on standard PHP projects. Application was also partly transitioned to a microservices architecture to accelerate time to market. This shift allowed to develop services in various programming languages. It also provided <coughs> greater flexibility in the development process. By breaking down the system into smaller independent services, it became possible to deploy updates more rapidly and ensure that each component can be optimized with the most suitable technology. As I have said, after optimizing database and code, the team began breaking the project into optimized microservices and the focus shifted to addressing the most significant bottlenecks in content, storage and delivery. <coughs> Image emerged as a critical bottleneck in the social network. So the problem is that the same image needs to be displayed in multiple sizes due to interface requirements and different platforms, mobile with retina, non-retina, web, and so on. Uh, before the resized image, uh, be before this, before changes, the resized image occupied a significant amount of storage space. Uh, but now the team eliminated pre-cut sizes and instead implemented dynamic resizing. They introduced another microservice called image processor that uh, generates required sizes on the fly. Additionally, they transitioned to serving images in WebP format. Uh, this change was very cost-effective. The optimizations led to significant improvements, as highlighted on the slide. Uh, so it's always worth identifying and optimizing the biggest bottlenecks for better performance. While the choice of technologies is unique for each high load company, many approaches overlap and demonstrate effectiveness across the board. We've discussed some of the VK's strategies, and it's worth nothing that many of uh, other tech giants also employ similar approaches to tackle high load challenges. For example, Netflix used a combination of microservices and distributed architecture to deliver content efficiently. They implemented caching strategies using EV cache and have developed their own data storage solutions. As one of the Russian's largest tech companies, Yandex uses a variety of in-house databases and caching solutions to manage its search engines 
and other services. I cannot but mention ClickHouse here, uh, a highly specialized database developed by Yandex to meet its specific needs. This solution proved to be so fast and efficient that uh, it's now widely used by others. Yandex created an open source database management system that stores and processes data by columns rather than rows, and uh, its highly performance query processing makes it ideal for handling large volumes of data and real-time analytics. VK also uses it. Uh, LinkedIn implements a distributed storage system called Espresso for its real-time data needs and leverages caching with uh, Apache Kafka to manage high throughput messaging. Twitter employs a custom-built storage solution called Manhattan designed to handle large volumes of tweets and user data. Same decisions in all companies. Uh, wrapping up, let us quickly revise uh, that we discussed today. First of all, high-load systems are applications built to support a large number of users and transactions at the same time, and they require excellent performance and reliability. Second, uh, the challenges of high-load systems include limits of scalability, reliability issues, performance slowdowns, and complica complicated integrations. Uh, then we've mentioned that high-load systems have specific requirements, preventing data loss, allowing fast feature updates, and keeping downtime to a minimum. Next, using external solutions can become risky under high-load, so often there is a need to go for some custom solution. Where to begin? You need to identify the key bottlenecks and then find a way to approach them. So this is where the optimizations begin. Among other technologies, high-load systems usually rely on effective scalable data storage with good caching, compiled languages, distributed architecture, and good tooling. And still, there are no fixed rules for creating high-load applications. It's always an experimental process. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions on the topic, I will be glad to answer them. Uh, feel free to message me in Telegram. Bye.